Good morning and welcome to this two-day online conference co-organized by DG Igri and the EU Intellectual Property Office. I'm Brian McGuire. It's my privilege to be the master of ceremony for this important event. During these two days, you will hear from many distinguished guests and speakers that will participate in the public launch of the Geographical Indication Review Process, which is designed to strengthen the GI system. Uh, today's session will begin in a moment with a welcome address by Commissioner Janis Wojcicki. Uh, we'll then hear from other distinguished guests uh, before we begin the parallel sessions. Uh, if you'd like to participate on social media, the hashtag today is EU Quality. Uh, our social media team will be pleased to hear from you and also your colleagues will be able to engage directly with you there. And uh, while the coffee breaks will probably involve you going simply across to your Nespresso machine and back, uh, we will also be continuing with some informal uh, chat uh, online and some uh, uh, video content for you to watch during uh, the breaks as well. And so now it's uh, my uh, pleasure to introduce uh, European Commissioner for Agriculture and Rural Development, uh, Janusz Wojcicki. Mr. Uh, Wojcicki, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is not the first time uh, geogra geographical indications have been through the uh, EU reform process. But this will surely be the most transparent and open review since they were first protected in the 1970s. Uh, we have a new momentum for geographical indications in Europe. Uh, right from the start of this commission, even before the uh, commission took office, President von der Leyen specifically requested me to look at ways to strengthen the system of geographical indications. Uh, we took the first step uh, in the farm to fork strategy uh, in May, uh, when the Commission committed to the geographical indications review and to boost the role uh, producer uh, groups. Under the European Green Deal, we have a chance now to set uh, to set our policy on new course. Geographical indications policy is not an exception and must be fit for future. Geographical indications products need to better uh, demonstrate they are sustainably produced. Today we will take the second step as Commission will announce the Intellectual Property Action Plan. In this action uh, plan promoted by my colleague Commissioner Breton, we commit to combating fraud and uh, counterfeiting. The geographical indications registration scheme should be more efficient and we now plan to develop a scheme for non-agricultural geographical indications. Uh, we must now turn this political ambition uh, into reality with the official geographical indications review process. Uh, the consultation on our geographical indications review roadmap closed today with significant comments from stakeholders on our planning. So this is the moment to embark on serious discussion. And with this stakeholders conference, the process is well and truly launched. Uh, I'd like to be ready to table the commission proposal towards the end of the next year. Uh, geographical indications uh, are a real success story in the European Union. They continue to be uh, in the heart of our agricultural policy, supporting our farmers to deliver quality agricultural products to European and to Europeans and maintaining uh, knowledge and traditions. Food, wine uh, and spirits products protected by geographical indications are truly an essential component of the European identity. You can tell I am a fan of ge geographical indications and equally you can guess uh, uh, that this reform process will be not change the basis, uh, basics of geographical indication protection. However, there are some real challenges we have to confront and uh, where we need stakeholder input to find the right answers. Uh, as I see it, the geographical indications review project uh, is built around uh, three themes. First, the question, can we make geographical indications more attractive to producers in all parts of the union? 
uh, farming and production of quality agricultural products uh, clearly is uh, our strength and uh, will always be uh, our strategic priority. Uh, and rightly so. That is why we will explore how to encourage producers to participate in the geographical indication schemes. We should not forget the fact that we have different starting points across member states, reflecting different experiences. Uh, therefore, this uh, review should pay particular attention to the needs of member states where geographical indications take up its medium or low so uh, that they would become more equally used in all parts of the Union. This is also about simplification and flexibility. Producers should put their efforts in to producing quality products and not overcoming barriers uh, to their geographical indications, applications and uh, amendments. Uh, second, uh, and strongly linked to the positive image of the scheme, geographical indications should meet societal expectations for greater sustainability and be resp uh, responsive to changes in market demands. Uh, producers should not be left alone to face these challenges. Uh, I can see scope for better synergies with rural development policy. Uh, geographical indications are an effective tool to contribute to rural development, but by securing local jobs and value chains and rural development policy is an effective way of uh, supporting producers to deliver sustainable outcomes and be empowered to better manage, enforce, and develop their geographical indications. And third, how do we reinforce the intellectual property dimension of geographical indications, including making the registration process more efficient? Uh, protecting geographical indications is about uh, guaranteeing a fair treatment uh, to producers who have earned uh, the, these rights. This is true both in the physical and online markets. Uh, I am especially concerned by the difficulties to protect them on the internet and stakeholder must help us with uh, imaginative solution in this digital age. Today's event is only the start of uh, an intensive, long process. Uh, we will be discussion, discussing options and uh, assessing impacts and looking for public opinion uh, all the way through. Uh, you will therefore have full opportunity to have your voice heard and uh, guarantee your views will impact the outcome. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, participants in this conference, let me uh, close by thanking you all for your participation and your interest. Uh, I hope you will enjoy the debates and find in enriching with so many interesting contributions during these two days. I also true you will leave up the main theme of this conference to help strengthen geographical indications. Thank you very much. Commissioner, thank you so much for opening the conference this morning. I, I think the, the keynote is to say that this is a moment of new momentum, as you said at the beginning of your speech as well, and that uh, there's a wide uh, range of diversity across the European Union in this, and this will be discussed over the next two days. So, Commissioner, thank you very much for taking time to be with us uh, this morning. Our next uh, speaker this morning, I'm very pleased to introduce uh, at the participation of Hans Joachim Fotel. He is the Parliamentary State Secretary in the German Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Mr. Commissioner, Member of the European Parliament, uh, Executive Director and uh, Director General, uh, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. I would like, as a Parliamentary State Secretary, to welcome you warmly from Berlin, also on behalf of Federal Minister Julia Glückner. I am delighted to present German thoughts on the further development of uh, geographical indicators. 
It is, after all, not our first reform process regarding geographical indicators, but it is the first under such difficult conditions. We must therefore not lose sight of the current situation. The corona pandemic has turned our lives upside down. The agricultural and food industry have been and continue to be affected particularly severely. And for many enterprises, the pandemic means an existential threat. The virus has also changed the everyday lives of us consumers. Because we are spending more time at home, people in Germany are cooking at home more often than before the coronavirus crisis. This was the result of a survey carried out by my ministry. We consumers have seen queues in front of supermarkets. But we have also seen that we have a food and agricultural sector that we can rely on even during a crisis. This has led a new amplification of our food and the people who produce, process and market it. Domestic agriculture has become more important for 39% of those survived in Germany. This is a great opportunity for our food and agricultural sector and especially for producers who are already working successfully with famous geographical indications, for example, Mosel, cherry brandy from the Black Forest and Turkian malt wine. But the origin of products is important to our citizens irrespective of the pandemic. More than four out of five consumers in Germany attach important to buying products originating from their own regions. They also attach important to quality and sustainability. And they are willing to pay more for these aspects. This brings me to the issue that has been on our minds in Germany. What lessons can we learn from these developments for continuing the development of the geographical indications of origin? I believe there are two main lessons. Firstly, we must continue to develop the geographical indicators in a way that means that willingness of consumers to pay for high quality regionally produced products makes a tangible difference in the wallets of our farmers and artisan food producers. So that our food and agricultural sectors can profit from the greater appreciation that consumers have for them. In view of the difficult situation for many farmers and uh, artisan food producers, this is an important and existentially vital step. And it is also in consumers' interest as to meet our consumers' demands. It is important that the European Union continues to keep product efficient and geared towards quality and diversity. But this will only be possible if food and production is also economically viable for producers. Secondly, we must continue to develop the GI system so that food labeling provides transparent, reliable and credible information about the added value of the food production, as it is only when the consumers can rely on an added value that they will be willing to pay more. Both lessons are important. 
and both must be taken into account in the further development of the geographical indications. The federal German government therefore welcomes the EU Commissioner's idea of strengthening the policy of geographical indications when implementing the farm to fork strategy. This is an important step towards acting on the lessons that have been learned. When the aim is to give more weight to sustainable aspects, it is particularly important to better identify and emphasize the added value of geographical indications for consumers and manufacturers. Germany also shares the Commission's conviction that the requires of a strategy to strengthen the geographical indications. We specifically welcome the Commission's initiative that aims to better protect geographical indications and better enforce this protection in future. Facilitate access to geographical indications through simpler procedures or also to reinforce the fight against counterfeits on the Internet. If we intend to also use the farm to fork strategy to further develop the geographical indications, however, Germany considers three points to be particularly important. Firstly, it is correct that the Commission should carry out a SWOT analysis of the implementation and effect of the current GI regulations. The results of this analysis are vital for improving the system. Secondly, we believe that the simplification of the procedures must not lead to restriction in the rights of all those involved to fair hearing. For example, of the deadline for appealing were to be overly shortened. Sustainability aspects must also not restrict the possibility of protection products of PGI and PDO. This means that indications of geographical origin that are not connected to sustainability must still to be able to be protected. And thirdly, Germany believes that uh, we need a harmonized EU legal framework and improved harmonized protection at EU level for so-called non-agri-GIs. Because uh, we expect that to have a positive economic impact on the internal market. Because harmonized protection of agricultural and non-agricultural geographic indications means greater clarity for consumers. It makes it easier for us consumers to better recognize quality aspects that are typical of uh, specific regions. And finally, because effective union-wide protection of non agri GIs makes it easier for producers to take action against counterfeits and abuse of the system. Germany is therefore convinced that the European Commission should close the existing legal gap regarding non-agri-GIs. Ladies and gentlemen, challenging times such as pandemics show how important it is to subject the way we work and our legal framework to ongoing scrutiny. Our system of geographic indications in the EU provides genuine added value both for our food sector and for our consumers. But we can make further 
improvements to it. On this note, I wish us all now a fertile discussion. Thank you so much for attention. State Secretary, thank you so much uh, for uh, setting the landscape of what is uh, clearly a very important subject which we're going to be dealing with these next two days. I particularly take note of the fact that not everything about this COVID crisis has been terrible. I think the only silver lining has been how we've begun to appreciate uh, the quality of food that we consume and how that's uh, processed. I think if you haven't seen uh, Netflix series Chef's Table, it, it showcases so many of Europe's high quality products and uh, the artisanal producers. And uh, this is something we uh, and like you say, it's a new stage of reform, but we have a new emphasis about how to go about uh, that reform. So thank you very much, uh, State Secretary. Now, it's uh, we've heard from the Commission. We've heard from uh, the Presidency of the European Council. Now, let's hear from the European uh, Parliament. I'm very pleased to welcome Ms. Irene uh, Tolleray, Member of the European Parliament and Co-Chair of the European Parliament's Intergroup on Wine, Spirits and Quality Foodstuffs. Uh, th thank you uh, very much. Uh, first, uh, I would like uh, to thank the Commissioner for having invited me to the presentation of this interesting conference on geographical indications, in which I am very deeply honoured to participate. I welcome the initiative put forward by the European Commission to launch a process aimed at reinforcing the current quality schemes. I think that we have already come a long way since July 14, 1992. This date was not only the French National Day, but it was also that of the first regulation creating the quality schemes of the European Union. These products result from the immemorial European heritage and they are the fruit of the adaptation of man to his environment. They are an expression of our identity. Nevertheless, today, we can do a lot more to improve the market share of those products and their resilience to difficult contexts, such as the current COVID-19 crisis. We all hope that in the next few months, the European Union will find a way out of this crisis, thanks to the new vaccine announced by the pharmaceutical industry. However, we still have to wait many months before our lives return to normality. Unfortunately, for the time being, confinement measures are the only weapon to slowing down the contamination of the virus. In this situation, the recovery plan decided by the European Union is of utmost importance to helping industries overcome the crisis. Let me stress that European producers have huge expectations on the recovery plan for it to serve as a safety net in the current crisis, particularly for small and medium enterprises. In my opinion, agro-tourism should be targeted among the different initiatives intended to help geographical indications to overcome this situation by putting a special focus on disadvantaged areas. I would like to highlight that the Oreca lockdown has led to deep economic consequences for some sectors, especially quality wine products, since more than 50% of their value come from that channel. Other products like cheese are also suffering similar conditions. The health crisis adds to the hurdles already encountered by European producers at the international level particularly regarding the Airbus disputes with the USA. Quality products are strongly targeted by the new tariffs. I would like to ask the commissioner to get closely involved in the follow-up of the parallel cases concerning Airbus and Boeing, and to push for the withdrawal of the tariffs imposed by the USA onto European agri-food goods. These products did not play any part in the trade dispute, yet they remain greatly affected. We should keep in mind that some quality products are highly dependent on exports, and the USA is the main EU trading partner. In the future, the EU needs to sustain its growing exports. This means that the protection of quality products 
should be automatically integrated in bilateral trade agreements with third countries, cover, covering all European geographical indications from the beginning, or at least containing review clauses to progressively enlarge the original list of protected indications. It is also very important that third countries apply truly effective control measures in order to avoid fraud. I genuinely celebrate the recent agreement concluded with China, and I hope that other third countries will follow in the same path. In regarding the transatlantic relations, there are greater expectations now Donald Trump is leaving the White House in January. I am confident that the new US government will re-establish a good political and trading relationship with the European Union. I hope that this would help smoothen the US position in terms of the protection of geographical indications, such as Champagne, Parmaham, Malaga wine, or feta. Allow me to dream about it. When it comes to the next revision of the EU policy on quality schemes, a relevant aspect to be addressed is the need to improve the information about the characteristics of those products. Consumers do not always differentiate geographical indication from non-quality products, with the exception of one indication. Citizens do not easily recognize European logos and the proliferation of private schemes can bring a great deal of confusion. Solving this problem should be at the top of the EU, EU priorities in order to improve the market positioning of geographical indications. The recognition of their authenticity by consumers is the only way to guarantee their economic valorization. Promotion campaigns play an important role for the prosperity of geographical indications. The last modification of the promotion regulation has also been a success story. I encourage the European Commission to further improve this important tool in the framework of the next revision of the legislation in order to help operators conquer and consolidate new markets. Last September, the intergroup of wine spirits and quality foodstuffs that I co-chair in the European Parliament was devoted to the challenges that quality products will face in the years to come. I was pleasantly surprised to see how all sectors are fully committed to address societal demands in terms of environmental, social, and economic sustainability. They are perfectly aware that quality products must be associated to positive environmental contribution in line with the ambitions of the Green Deal. In the legislative report on the new common market organization, the Parliament has supported a step in that direction by including the possibility to add the sustainable development of GI to the technical specifications. During the meeting of the intergroup, producers have expressed their wish to find an adequate nutritional labeling system. They have also manifested their preferences regarding the different models already in place in some member states. I think that this topic will raise very intense discussion, but I am confident that at the end of the day, we will be able to find a good solution, allowing proper information to be available to consumers and preserving at the same time the image of quality products. To boost the attractiveness of quality schemes for farmers, another important element to be improved upon is the simplification of the administrative burden related to the recognition procedures, which are costly and complex. In some sectors, small operators refuse adopting quality schemes, especially when consumers do not pay much attention to geographical indication due to the aforementioned lack of awareness. Furthermore, it is necessary to boost the effectiveness of geographical indication. The European Parliament has supported new provisions in this slide. Some of them are the introduction of value sharing clauses and the extension 
to all geographical indications of the supply management tools, which are already in place with great success for cheese and dry cured hams. Another significant challenge for the next years is eliminating counterfeiting. User patients or imitations contribute to the dilution of the reputation of geographical indications and create mistrust and confusion amongst consumers. Illegal practices among, amount to 9% of the total market for geographical indications. The proposal of the European Commission to enlarge the protection of geographical indications to online sales and to sales in the transit is welcome, but it is also necessary to develop stringent measures against usurpation of internet domain names. Last but not least, I consider it imperative to keep a clear differentiation between protected designations of origin and protected geographical indications as they represent different links within the territory. Water it down this distinction may be counterproductive for the reputation of those different schemes. Regarding wine and spirit, it is also crucial to keep their specificities. I hope that the European Commission and the Council will take on board the demands presented by the European Parliament, which also include other relevant elements for geographical indication, such as the conservation of human factors within their definition. We should keep in mind that quality products are not only the result of the terroir, but also of their human work. I would like to stress that the revision of the legislation on GIs, which is the object of this concerns, should not delay urgent modifications that can be done under the ongoing discussions about the agricultural common policy reform. To finish my presentation, I would like to stress the important role played by quality products in rural development strategies. In the last years, the amount of quality products have been growing, which demonstrates the positive results of the European Union legis legislation. Also, there is room for improvement. Those products already provide economic and social benefits to rural populations, thanks to the impossibility of delocalization and their significant value added. Geographical indications have not only an economic component, but also a cultural, gastronomic, and natural heritage, which is, which is part of the identity of the European Union. In the word agriculture, there is the word culture, and geographical indication are, by essence, cultural products. Let's reinforce this historical link between the rural territories. We will need the collaboration of all the stakeholders and public administrations concerned by paying special attention to areas with economic of natural constraints. In global terms, the CAP should provide support for producers to maintain collective commitments and in the long term, strengthen value chains. I would like to congratulate again the European Commission for this initiative and I am looking forward to listening to the presentations of the different speakers. Thank you very much. Ms. Torre, thank you so much uh, for really highlighting the human-centric uh, aspect of, of this policy process as well, and uh, to, for emphasizing the safety net that SMEs really uh, depend upon in the context of, of GIs too. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation this morning. Now, just to say that uh, in a moment or two, you'll be able to uh, send some questions and uh, you'll be able to uh, send those on the, on screen there using the Slido option. And then later on uh, today, you'll have the Q&A option as well. So if you just pay attention to that, our team uh, will be able to establish that for you in just a moment. Now, it's uh, my pleasure to turn to another special event as part of this process, which is the launch of a new GI portal, uh, the GI View. To introduce and perform the ceremony, uh, we will hear from the heads of DGI Group and the EU IPO, as this is the fruit of a close collaboration between this EU institution and EU office. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to introduce Mr. Wolfgang Buscher, the Director General of DG Agri. Thank you very much, Brian. 
Commissioner, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to this conference. Visibility and transparency are decisive for policy making. They are decisive for the policy conception. They are equally decisive for promoting successful policies, but visibility and transparency are also quite important in implementing policies. In our case, GIs in particular, with respect to protection against counterfeiting. And for these reasons, uh, the European Commission has put a lot of emphasis over the last years in its GIs policy with respect to uh, visibility and transparency. At the start of this year, all 3,300 registered uh, GIs from our four GI schemes relating to food, wine, spirits, aromatized wines have been displaced in one database called eAmbrosia. Now, at the end of the year, we launch the GI View portal. It contains the registered names and those protected under 34 international agreements. That includes some or all of the UGIs protected in each of those agreements, totaling some 40,000 instances of GI protection. This is a truly astonishing figure and also reflects the success and the strength of the EU system, both within the European Union, but also across the world. In a moment, Christian Archambault will explain more about the GI's view, which is the product of a fruitful cooperation between our Directorate General and AIPO. The next phase now will be to get producer groups to add descriptions and photos and maps and to connect thus the dry registered data to real people to which Miss Madame Tolleré has just referred to products and places of origin, which is at the core, I think, of the success of GIs. There is a very serious side to this also, as I have just indicated, because GI view will be the tool that allows the producer groups to access the OIPOS enforcement portal and thus a direct link to anti-fraud and customs bodies to enforce GIs against counterfeiting. And those agencies will be able to see the description of the genuine product and whom to contact in case of suspected fraud. So GIs is not only about promoting our GI view is not only about promoting our GIs, but it's also about protecting them. Let me make a last point to reiterate what our commissioner has just indicated earlier. GIs are a success story. Still, we face new challenges, in particular when it comes to sustainability of our food chain. And this request for more sustainability does not also include our GIS policy. We need to meet consumer expectations in this respect. And I'm sure that we must and we will find ways to encourage producers to communicate better on the sustainability, sustainability part of the GIs and where necessary, improve their practices. Now, <clears throat> I am really, I'm sure that we will provide, we will receive very valid input from you, from all the stakeholders in how we can in this GI reform better address these sustainability issues, but also all other elements that are important for the GI review. Many thanks to all of you and good success to this event.
Thank you so much. Uh, transparency and communication at the heart of this process and over these uh, next two days as well. And as, as you said, I'm now delighted to give the floor to the Executive Director of the European Union Intellectual Property Office, Mr. Christian uh, Archambault, who will officially launch the new GI View database. Thank you, Brian. Um, Commissioner, State Secretary, distinguished members of the European Parliament, Director General, fellow speakers and honored guests. This conference and the cooperation between EUIPO and DG Agree is a striking example of how we are stronger together within the EU family. Geographical indications are important intellectual property rights. And as we all know, at the EU level, agricultural GIs are dealt with by our colleagues in DG Agri. On the other hand, EUIPO was established to create a unitary trademark right, even though we now also administer registered community designs. And through the Observatory Against Infringement of Intellectual Property Rights, we also have an interest in all aspects of IP rights. That said, in the past, GIs and trademarks were a bit like separate islands. But just as the EU institutions and agencies form a family, IP rights also have close links. The owners or users of our various rights offer, often treat them in a bundled fashion and expect them to work together in the world of business and commerce. Indeed, a good part of the value of GIs is hidden in trademarks or brands that depend upon them for their success. Just over two years ago, at the last major conference that we organized together, we explored the interface between trademarks and GIs in a concentrated dialogue. Indeed, for some years now, we have been cooperating on the pre-examination of the agricultural GI rights, always under the authority of the GIAGRI, of course, and this is now an established aspect of our office's work. This makes good sense since the protection of IP rights has many facets and in the examination of trademarks, for example, we look to see if there is any conflict with the geographical indication. In parallel, the IP enforcement portal provides enforcement authorities with information from right holders that facilitate the identification of counterfeits. More recently, working in partnership with Europol and the European Anti-Fraud Office, the IP enforcement portal has helped to put enforcers and right holders in contact in order to combat COVID-related fakes. However, it has a much wider reach and is also used to protect GIs against counterfeit. Looking further afield, the office is also involved in initiatives dealing with GI protection in third countries, included in the EU funded projects that we implement on behalf of the Commission in most major global regions. In this regard, one of the innovation and most striking results of the cooperation with DG Agri is that we have worked together to create a new online tool that will help bring transparency to agricultural GIs. The GI View database, which is formally launched today, contains agricultural GIs at the EU level, the agricultural GIs of third country that are protected in the EU as a result of bilateral arrangements, as well as some 40,000 entries showing the protection of the EU GIs worldwide. After I finish speaking, there will be a short video promoting the new database. A video demonstration is also being made available via one of the conference links, and from today, I would encourage you to explore it for yourself. Let's remember that GIs recognize products for their quality and are part of the European way of life. GIs contain world famous names like prosciutto di Parma or champagne, as well as local and regional products that are a source of identity and pride. Based in Spain, I could mention, for example, queso manchego, cava or turon de alicante. These are precious assets closely linked with the European culture and way of doing things that we must both celebrate and protect. GI View is an impressive tool which not only gives transparency to GI of IP rights, it also promotes them and allows the producers to pin themselves on the map. In short, it sends a clear message to consumer and control authorities that GIs are here. This is a good step forward and an important result of our cooperation. However, even though this cooperation has grown in recent years and is proving to be very useful for stakeholders and users, everyone would concede that there is always room for improvement. As has been noted in the past by the European Parliament and others, while the EU has a registration system for foodstuff, wine and spirits, there is still no single registration for non-agricultural GIs 
which still have to rely on different protection at national level in the EU. The European Commission has published a study on a green paper on the creation of a system of protection of non-agri-GIs at EU level. Within the past few weeks, the Council has adopted a set of conclusions on key elements of a future EU intellectual property policy stressing the need for a coherent overall strategy to ensure both protection of and fair access to innovation. One of the key elements was the recognition of the need to strengthen geographical indication protection systems in the EU by considering a system of sui generis protection of non-agricultural products on the basis of a thorough impact assessment of its potential cost and benefit. This conference will serve as a focal point for stakeholders to make their views known on a range of issues, including, for example, the legal challenge to protect GIs on the internet. EIPO is already engaging in a dialogue about the protection of trademark rights with the online platforms that have become even more important during this pandemic. GI rights should also be part of this. Today's conference, the ongoing work we do together and the launch of GI View shows how we can cooperate and ensure the fruitful coexistence between the different IP rights and GIs. We stand at the turning point for the future of GI rights in the EU and the impact assessment of GI reforms requires intensive input and consultation of stakeholders. This conference will contribute greatly to the debate on the best way forward. I am confident that GI rights, which are so important to many countries and regions, will emerge even stronger. And in this context, as always, EUIPO remains ready to support any move in the IP area if the legislators believe we can add value and make a contribution to jobs, growth, and social cohesion. Thank you. And now I'm very happy to formally announce the launch of GI View and pass directly to the video. What is GI View? GI View is a new application for all types of agricultural geographical indications with a modern user interface, extended search capabilities that will serve public users, GI right holders, trademark examiners and enforcement authorities. The new online consultation tool is a result of collaborative efforts between the European Commission and the European Union Intellectual Property Office, the EUIPO. It contains official registered data that includes protected name and file number, status, country or countries of origin, product type and category, priority date, legal documents, as well as international agreements providing for GI protection in the EU and beyond. Furthermore, it provides extended data, which is additional information on a GI, such as product description, description of the geographical area, link between the product and its origin, pictures of the product, region of production, both map and NUTS codes, classification, examples of translations, country authorities, producers groups, control bodies, and competent control authorities. The tool also offers advanced search functionalities, such as similarity search on GI protected name, dynamic filters on the search results, an interactive GI map with information about the GI and the producer group, the option for GI right holders to request access to the IP enforcement portal, export capabilities both on search results and the GI ID card, a private area for the management of GI extended data. By uploading your product details on GI View now, you will help us ensure the competitiveness and the protection of European Union products worldwide. Christian Chambaud and Wolfgang Aborcio, thanks so much uh, for this introduction to uh, I was clearly an intuitive and extremely useful uh, new system. So uh, thanks and congratulations uh, to all the teams uh, involved in the preparation of this as well. Uh, you can see this in the gallery view during the coffee break as well. It'll be an impressive uh, demo if you want to take a moment uh, to go through that. I think it's well worth your time. Uh, so thanks to all our, our speakers uh, so far this morning. Now it's uh, my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker before the 
Coffee Break, and uh, Professor Dev Ganji of Oxford University. Professor Ganji is well known uh, to many of you participating uh, in this conference today as the leading authority on GIS's intellectual property rights. Uh, he starts a story in 1883 this morning, and he'll sketch a, a map of just how far we've progressed with uh, GI protection. This latest strengthening GI's initiative is a very significant step, which can help producers enforce the rights and increase sales in a practical way. However, he will also point out that strong rights of GI producers may need to be balanced against the legitimate rights of others in certain situations. Professor Ganji, welcome. Thank you, Brian. Um, and thank you for the invitation. It's uh, as someone with a sense of the history of GI protection over the past 150 years, I have some sense of the length and challenges of that journey. And it's a privilege to be sharing this uh, panel with the institutions and the people who have strengthened GIs and, and taken us to this point, um, which is a very good and optimistic place to be. So thank you very much. Uh, could I have the next slide, please? So my story, as Brian said, starts in 1883. And if we look back to the origins of international GI protection in the Paris Convention of 1883, we see just how difficult it was to get any form of uh, international protection. So you could only prove infringement if somebody was using a false indication with fraudulent intention and with a fake trading name or commercial name. Next slide, please. So the protection was really going after the seriously bad guys, the absolute fraudulent pirates. And it was a very, very difficult, it was a very, very difficult form of protection to achieve. But next slide, please. Today we have um, all of the opportunities and advantages that the plenary panel has been mentioning. We have registration-based GI as a form of intellectual property. Uh, there's a recognition that GIs do different work to other intellectual property rights. There are the culture, heritage, gastronomy, rural employment, uh, so biodiversity, potentially sustainability, all of these agendas recognized by GIs as a special form of intellectual property. And therefore, I, I'm a big believer in sui generis GI protection. I think you need a separate system to accommodate these policy interests. You have better information resources. I was really impressed by GI View um, and the quality of information that it provides and how it connects to enforcement portals. And it really does make life easier for producers, for consumers, for competitors. And that is the, the thinking behind it. You've got much stronger standards of legal protection, stronger rules. So you protect a broad range of misleading uses. You prevent evocation. There's no generic use once the product is registered. And crucially, especially for smaller groups of producers, you have ex officio enforcement where public authorities step in and, and they help producers enforce their rights. Because as I know from the experience of Darjeeling and many sort of GI groups, uh, enforcement is expensive, it's di difficult, and nobody wants to litigate in order to enforce their rights at length. So the support and help is, is truly welcome. And then you've got the bilaterals, you've got the free trade agreements, uh, and the EU joining the Lisbon registration system. So international protection is really um, increasing and improving. So these are fantastic achievements. And they are outstanding achievements. But the word outstanding sort of also reminds us that there are outstanding tasks. And that is, in part, the purpose of this review. So in terms of the outstanding tasks, let's have a look and see um, what is left to be done. And one of the key points that has stood out to me in the recent past is just how much diversity remains within a harmonized European system. And often that has to do with the last mile of protection at the national member state level. So in terms of enforcement diversity, the EUIPO produced an excellent report uh, sort of a couple of years ago um, and, and that details how the national implementation legislation varies. So if a producer of Scotch whiskey has to go and litigate um, somewhere, they've got to often plug into national consumer protection law or unfair competition law or trademark law. And all of these different systems have different standards of proof, different remedies are available, administrative actions, uh, sort of civil litigation, criminal penalties, all of these vary across the EU. So that's one area where some careful thinking needs to be done. Then the report also points out control system diversity. How do the inspection structures work, both within the group and on the marketplace? What is the frequency of checks? Who is the body doing the checking? All of these continue to vary across the EU as well. 
And finally, one point which has struck many of us who follow this field is the diversity of registrars at the national level. Some registrars exist within trademark registries, others are housed within ministries of agriculture. Uh, you've got specialists in agricultural products, you've got general sort of registrars for non-agri GIs as well. And like the EU IPO had the Trademarks and Designs Network, or the which has now become the European uh, Union's Intellectual Property Network, it might be a good time to connect all of these national registrars together. So they can talk to each other, they can talk about common problems, common solutions, and start to forge common approaches because the substantive examination for GIs happens at the national level. So that might be a very useful direction to pursue in the future. So there's work to be done, including in terms of international protection, which I haven't put on this slide. But as part of the network of bilateral agreements, uh, the EU has lists of protected terms and the lists are then protected in South Korea, Canada, China. But how do those protected terms actually touch down in these jurisdictions? Do they have to join some kind of national register? Are there opposition procedures? Are the lists automatically protected? These are some of the remaining questions in terms of effective protection in that sort of country where the agreement is in place. Um, so these are some of the ideas in terms of work that remains to be done. Next slide, please. And with a strengthening system, it's sort of worth reminding ourselves that um, it may be time to think about a more balanced system as well. So GI users now have rights, effective broad rights, rights which actually help them um, continue to produce these wonderful heritage products. But as GIs grow stronger, it may be time to see that others have rights too. So going back to, in fact, what the GI View presentation emphasized, the register is an information resource. And that's sort of, in many ways, that's emphasized in the Court of Justice's case law, the Prosciutto di Parma case says that registration tells people about the rights and informs them about the scope of the rights. Uh, the regulation itself in recital 26 talks about the register giving competitors and other traders information. But then you have evocation protection, which is extremely broad. So you start off with the name on the register, but the scope of protection expands well beyond it. Next slide, please. So if the name on the register is, for example, Queso Manchego, which you can see on the lower right-hand side of the slide, but through a sort of a literary concept, which leads to a region of origin and then to the PDO name, Rocinante is nothing at all like Queso Manchego. So how can you look at the register, look at Queso Manchego and know that the scope of the rights extends to Rocinante as well? is one of the challenging questions. There's a lot more information available, but that information doesn't tell us about the scope of rights. And that's one of the issues to consider. Next slide, please. The other issue, which is again about balancing GI users' rights with those of others, is the use of GIs as ingredients. And we have some case law from the Court of Justice. So we've got the Champagne versus Aldi case, where Champagne was used as an ingredient in the sorbet. And there the question is, if people are legitimately using GIs as ingredients and you want them to truthfully indicate that, um, how should we approach this in terms of the default presumptions? Should we view this presumptively as infringing where permission is required first? Should we view this as acceptable? And only if there's a problem should the law intervene? These are important questions for downstream food innovation in terms of new products, uh, in terms of just offering consumers a more varied range of products as well. So this is within the EU, different actors and different interests needing to be better balanced and coordinated. And my final point in the next slide is when it comes to the scope of protection, extending potentially to even products being imitated. Now, historically, GIs have never been patents. GIs have never been about protecting the product itself. But recent case flow, and many of us are familiar with the Mobier case, which is pending before the Court of Justice, has to do with whether a feature of the product might be seen to be misleading or infringing in some way, despite the label on the product containing clarifying information. And in that sense, through product features, potentially signaling uses, uh, should we protect product features as well? So through protecting the visual appearance of the product, are we giving perhaps producers a monopoly over the, the product itself and its important features? And in my final slide on this issue, ne next slide, please. If this argument had succeeded, then Champagne would have argue arguably been able to argue the bubbles, the quality of the product itself, potentially would have prevented Cava, pre prevented Prosecco 
from maybe even taking off. So how far do we want to go when we start extending GI law into protecting the product itself? So as GIs grow stronger, these are some of the balancing issues we need to be considering as well. So my final slide, please. So that's the title of my presentation, Strengthening Responsibility. Many of the developments that have been already mentioned and will roll out over the next two days are wonderful and unobjectionable, and they align everybody's interests. They align consumers, GI users, other competitors, trademark owners, and all of the interests are aligned in that harmonious circle. Better protection against counterfeits, access to the e-portals for better enforcement through customs authorities, better protection online, all of these are genuinely helpful things. But as GIs become more and more like intellectual property, which just protects brand value, we may need to think of reconciling that broader scope of protection with the interests of the other constituencies you see on that seesaw over there. What happens to consumers whose potentially choice is reduced? What happens to competitors? And what happens to trademark owners as you have thousands of GIs with potentially evocation levels of protection? So these are some difficult and genuine questions um, that it would be a good time to introspect and to consider. One final concluding note, I've been following the progress of my colleagues at Oxford working on the vaccine. And one of the important lessons is intellectual property rights are important and wonderful, but so is a certain degree of flexibility and sharing of the data which led to the vaccine and allowing people to sort of coexist and, and sort of share space together. And I'll end with that note. It may be time to think about those issues as we strengthen GIs. Thank you very much. Professor Dev Genji, thanks so much uh, as well uh, for highlighting the diversity that remains in harmonization to giving us uh, our, our first sound bite for the day as well. That uh, the, the outstanding achievements so far, but outstanding tasks uh, still uh, at hand as well. So thank you uh, for a really concise uh, presentation with uh, huge implications, which will be discussed over the next two days as well. Uh, so uh, we're almost at uh, coffee break time. I uh, just remind you that uh, Slido is open. If you test for uh, the hashtag GI 2020. Uh, you'll be able to send questions uh, there. We'll be able to respond to those during the course of the next two days as well. So hashtag GI 2020 on the Slido app, uh, if you can go to that. And uh, we want you to participate as much as possible and as interactively over the next two days. And uh, for those uh, who will be able to raise their hands as well uh, during uh, using the app, uh, we'll be able to respond to that uh, accordingly too. So please uh, take every advantage. The uh, questions and comments will be related during the session, but also after the session as well. So uh, even if you're not responded to, it will be noted and uh, something will be uh, actioned afterwards as well. So we're going for coffee break uh, for 15 minutes. But as I said, um, run across to your Nespresso machine. Uh, I'm going to be joined by Francis Fay in just a moment to have an uh, informal chat. Uh, we'll complete with uh, social distancing and masks um, just to, to talk through the, what we've discussed this morning. And uh, you will be going to the parallel sessions uh, just after the coffee break. So please check your agenda and then uh, click on uh, the right link for the parallel sessions then as well. So we're back in 15 minutes, uh, back at, at 10.30. Enjoy your coffee and see you then. Stay with us. <laughs>